In this video, I'm going to tell you about the new Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Compendium. It's kind of disappointing. So earlier this week, actually back on Monday, I made a video about the new 2021 brand new version of Kill Team, predominantly focusing on the Octarius box. This is the core book from Octarius, and I talked about what's in the core book, and I also talked about what's in the Octarius book, which is basically the data sheets and stuff like that for the Veteran Guardsmen, aka Death Corps of Krieg, and the Orc Commandos, uh, aka Fancy Orcs. And um, yeah, these are, um, these are books, and uh, they come in the new core you know, big box that's going to be going on sale by the end of the month. It'll be in, available for you to purchase. Um, this core book will also be for sale separately. So if you just want to buy the core book so you can play the game, um, that won't do the entire job. You're also going to need to uh, get this compendium as well. Now, let me keep shuffling books here. Whereas the past version, the 2018 version of Kill Team, in the core book that you bought, it had all the rules, plus it had all the army lists for the majority of the armies. At the time it launched, it had basically everything covered except for like demons, sisters of battle, crute, a couple of little things, which they then put out in different publications in different ways. And then um, basically by the end, nearly everything was covered except for like really big stuff like Imperial Knights. You're not going to have Imperial Knights at a kill team game. It doesn't make any sense. Shush. So. This was a $40 book. I used to tell people who were like, I'm interested in getting into uh, role-playing, or not role-playing, uh, what, we, what we do, tabletop wargaming. And I would tell them, hey, for 40 bucks and some models that maybe you get on eBay or you buy them from your local store or you borrow them from a friend or whatever, you could start playing. That's no longer the case. If you have no interest in the Octarius box, which will be coming out very soon, like I said, I think it goes on pre-order as this video is getting... Um, published and I don't know they have not said the official price yet but the rumor going around is it's $200 US for the box which includes the board the terrain which is a bunch of cool orky kind of terrain and a group of orcs very interesting cool orc commandos and also those veteran guardsmen all the stats everything you need plus also the core book and the dice and the weird little new measurement gauge, gauges and, and all that jazz and that's not terrible for getting completely started with everything you need to play the game, admittedly. Um, and that's cool. And if you watched that past video that I did earlier in the week, ciao, um, I talked about how it, the rules are okay. You know, um, there's things I like, things I don't, things I wish they hadn't taken out, um, some cool things they added. They definitely beefed up the... Um, narrative campaign rules, which I really appreciate because the old narrative campaign for the old version of Kill Team here were, it was, it was nothing, I mean, it, there was technically a narrative campaign, but it was real, yeah. and the new one is actually pretty nice, but there's other things that I'm not necessarily a big fan of them changing and taking out. The, the main core rules loop about how you shoot, how you fight, all that kind of stuff, the activations, I'm actually all on board with all that. I'm not angry or uh, or whatever, or even disappointed uh, about the way they changed those things. Um, but then there's the compendium now, which I can talk about as of today. And uh, still not angry, but I, but I am disappointed. All right, Uncle Adam, why are you disappointed? What's, what's the problem with the compendium? Well, um, it kind of... Okay. If you've been playing Warhammer 40k, or at least been aware of it for some time, and not even that long, but for a while, you'd know, like, I started in 5th edition 40k, okay. When 5th edition was available, and I started playing Chaos Space Marines, I think that my codex was from 4th edition, is when it had come out. And then sometime in 6th edition, I finally got a new codex, okay. This is back when Games Workshop released stuff really just a trickle as opposed to a fire hose like they release things now. It was just, a you were like lucky if you got three new codexes in a year for the entire game. And now it's, sometimes you get three in a month. Well, you usually get two in a month, but you do get a bunch of new codices all the time. So, um, but that was fine. You know, fifth edition came along, you still used an old codex. Sixth edition, you, were, it, you didn't have to worry about it. When eighth edition came along, it was such a drastic change from the rules of seventh edition. They ripped off a pretty specific band-aid 
And what happened was you had to get all new rules all across the board for all the armies right away. When a new edition normally comes out of, let's say, Warhammer 40,000, they're just like, well, you, the, the, it'll be compatible with the old codexes for, until the new ones come out or whatever. Or maybe they release like a document, like an FAQ that changes a couple little things here and there. When 8th edition came out, they came out with these indexes that they were just brand new stats for all the armies across the board. And they were really dull. They were just stopgap, like, here you go. Here's new stuff so you can legally play with these. There's no hobby. There's no art. There's no lore. It's just a book. It was inexpensive, just a big old book full of data sheets. They made a bunch of them. I'm looking at them on the shelf over there. There's Imperium 1, Imperium 2, a couple of Xenos ones, uh, Chaos, and something else. I can't quite read it from here. It's in the dark. So anyway, I, I've got them on my bookshelf. They're there, and you, that's what you had to do. That's what they had to do when 8th came along. When 9th edition came along, they didn't rip off that same Band-Aid again, so you could still use the old codices. This is an index. That's, that's basically what this is. They've changed the rules quite a bit. Obviously, as we showed in the last video, you saw how the rules are very, very different in the way that you attack, the way that you defend, the way that you get into melee. And so they decided, well, cool, we'll make this one book, but it's not a replacement for the, the rules that were in the old book. In, back in the day, as I just mentioned, when you played Core, uh, rules. You bought this $40 book. You got all the rules plus all the stats that you needed. Okay, right here. Here's your Death Guard kill teams. There's some stuff. Here's your data sheets. Great. Plague Marine, Poxwalker. You only had two choices really with the Plague Marines, and that's fine. Thousand Suns is the same deal. You got the Rubric Marines and you got the Zangors. You know, and that's just the way that it worked. But you had this. It was ready to go. One book. Cool. Now, if you want to play, let's say you don't want to buy the Octarius box, but you still want to play. Um, you're going to need both of these. And everything that I'm reading online says that these are going to be 50 bucks each. So we go from a $40 book to $100. And this thing here, nope, sorry, this thing here, the, um, the compendium, is, um, it's very boring. Boring. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean boring? Well, okay, so here's the Octarius book. This is the book that comes in the Octarius box, and it has the stats for the veteran guardsmen, a.k.a. the Krieg, and also the uh, orc dudes. So, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, they got rid of specialists. You no longer have your comms guy, your this guy, your that guy, your whatever, where you would just take a model, you take a Necron Immortal and say, now this guy's the comms guy, so he's got this special rule. Instead, what they did is here you have your veteran guardsman kill team. There's no more points, as I also mentioned in the last team, the last thing. So you get this, the, these guys get to pick 10 models. You get to take, get pick 10 models. One of them has to be the sergeant veteran, and they have a couple of weapon choices here. The difference is between bolt pistol, las pistol, or plasma pistol. They can pick any one of those three, or chainsword or power weapon. Or they could go with a bolt gun and a bayonet if you want to. So those are your options. Then you have like 14 other ones down here, and you have to pick nine of them. Most of them you can only pick one. So you can only take one medic or one comms or one demolition. Do those names sound familiar? Those are specialists, right? And then you have your trooper veteran, which you could take as many as nine of if you want to. But the rest of these guys, you can only take one. So you have to pick out of this list, plus also your sergeant. And that's how you make your list for the veteran guardsmen in the Octarius book. It's the same thing with the orcs. They have all these different specialist orcs. You pick some. There's some like regular boys. You can take as many as you want. Well, up to a certain limit. Um, but everything else you get to take one of. And that's how you differentiate your army and pick your strategies and go through all that stuff and do all the cool things. Now, let's say you want to play Space Marines. You go to the compendium here. Let's say you love those new um, um, Intercessor Assault guys that came in um, Pariah Nexus, which is its own mess. You can pachow. Watch that video if you're really super interested in watching that. But um, So you're going to build some, uh, you want to have some regular Primaris, and you want to have some, you know, the, the Intercessors, and you want to have some assault intercessors and here's the problem is you can't um generally armies kill teams are made up of fire teams in the new system some groups some forces get two fire teams and some get one space marines in the compendium get one fire team okay so you can either pick Intercessor fire team assault intercessor fire team incursor fire team infiltrator reaver Heavy Intercessor, um, Tactical Marines, or Scouts. You pick one. 
That's your entire army. If you decided, yeah, those assault intercessors, they're really for me, you get one assault intercessor uh, sergeant equipped with either a hand flamer, heavy bolt pistol, or plasma pistol. And then on the other hand, chain sword, power fist, power weapon, or thunder hammer. Those are your options. And then your second option is four assault intercessor warriors. That's it. That's your entire army. That's your entire force if you want to play Space Marines using the frankly, boring compendium. That's what they've done. That's why this is an index. This is, that's why this is a stopgap, because what's going to happen is that they, and they just kind of announced this actually earlier this week on uh, Warhammer Community, they're going to be releasing a bunch of themed boxes with new sculpts that will basically be like the stuff that we see in here, but for Space Marines, but for Eldar, but for Tau. So it'll be new models, and then you'll have a special sniper tau and a special medic snow tau and, and all that stuff. But you'll be like, but I just want to play with the models I already have. And they'll be like, yeah, you can do that. Buy this book, this book for 50 bucks and then have fun with some pretty boring stuff. Now you're like, all right, well, but so, okay, great. I have to take five assault intercessors and that's it. But still, I'm sure there's a lot of things I can do with those assault intercessors. Well, no, you can't. Um, Again, like I said, disappointed is what I am. Where the heck are they? Okay, so here's your Assault Intercessor Warrior right here. Heavy Bolt Pistol. You get to throw four dice. You hit on threes. You do three damage, four if you do crits. And there's one special rule, which means that their range kind of short. They're not able to shoot the entire length of the board like most ranged weapons are because it's a pistol. You know, you get an effective range. And then you have a Chainsword, which is uh, five attacks, three up, four, five, and no special rules. Abilities, nothing. Unique actions, nothing. So basically, they just threw, they figured out some stats for them. You know, okay, they can move three. They've got an APL of three because they're Space Marines, so they get one more uh, action point than other people. They only move in ones. A defense of three, save three, 13 wounds. Um, they can be combat or they can be staunch, but there's literally nothing else going on. And that's nearly every single other part of the Space Marines. Now, Space Marines are kind of popular amongst folks, generally, from what I've heard, sales-wise, and these couldn't be more boring. I've gone, well, two entire spreads, eight different models. There's not a single ability or unique action amongst any of them. But I can tell you when the Space Marine special box for the new kill team comes out, it will be filled with very interesting models, with very interesting special abilities and, uh, and unique actions. Um, and then... You'll probably have to buy that one, obviously, so that you have something that's actually usable. The way that Warcry works right now generally is this. In Warcry, if you take the normal forces that are part of Warcry, like that were released when Warcry was released, so your, your Unmade, your Iron Golems, your Corvus Cabal, etc. You take those forces, you can use those, build them how you want, do all kinds of fun stuff. Then they release those cards for Age of Sigmar. So you could use regular Age of Sigmar models in Warcry. And then eventually they released these books. There's four of these separate books. This is the uh, Order one. And then all the information in there was put right in these books, which was great. Okay, so that's nice. Here's the issue, is that everybody, for the most part, believes that the Age of Sigmar army lists are far more powerful when you make a thousand point list of this than the thousand point lists of the special bespoke, um, you know, war cry things. And I feel like what they're trying to do is do the opposite here in, uh, in, in these fancy ones. So here in this Octarius book, I bet you a normal uh, group of these guys is very more, at the very least, it's more interesting to play. At the very least, you have a lot more variability and options and different special abilities and cool things you can do in comparison to, I have too many books, um, to the stuff in here. Here's another thing that I also really don't like about the new compendium. So again, here's the order book for Warcry. This is the stuff that you can build if, let's say, you decide to do Caradon Overlords, right? So you got your Caradon Overlords. Here's um, all the different units you can do. Now you got to start, you got to have at least one leader, which is this little tiny icon here, which is kind of hard to pick up, but it's there. So you got to have one of these who's a leader, and then you can pick basically all the other stuff you want. So you could have a Endrin Master with Endrin Harness, that's your leader, and then you can go until you run out of points, and you could have a Arcanaut Company Privateer with Light Skyhook, you could have an Endrigger with Aethermatic Volley Gun, 
You could have a Sky Warden with Vulcanizer Pistol and Sky Pike. You can mix and match all these different things within this one force very easily. Take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, like a buffet, like I like, like skirmish games generally are designed to do. And that's great. But with Kill Team now, even this one, yeah, I can pick a bunch of different things like the, the demo guy and the comms guy and then this guy. But I have to take 10 models. I always have to take 10 models and they all have to be from basically the same force. And uh, when you get into the compendium, it's even worse because, like I said, there's no such thing as a kill team that can have more than two fire teams. Every fire team is made up of one type of model. So my old Necron Force, where I had a couple or three, I think, uh, for kill team, I had a couple or three um, uh, immortals, and one of them had a different weapon, but otherwise there were three immortals. It was like three or four warriors. It was a single death mark and a couple of flayed ones. That's not anywhere near legal anymore using this new compendium. I got to pick two of those. I could go warriors and flayed ones. I could go uh, immortals and f uh, warriors. I could go immortals and death marks, but you can only ever use two types of models as far as I can tell, at least with the compendium. And in the case of the space Marines, you can only use one because they only get one fire team. Even the custodes get two potential fire teams and then you could have some custodes and some sisters of silence but with space marines i hope you like just one kind because that's all you get now does this make the game play any differently i mean rules wise no it pretty much plays the same way whether you're using the octarius folks uh, that are currently there or the very soon to be updated uh, you know lists for everybody across the board and new stuff like that but it does make a game a lot more interesting when you have choices. If you play, let's say again, just to kind of harp on that same thing, you play Assault Intercessors in this, your choices are to go up and get within the range to shoot someone with a pistol or hit them with a sword, and that's it. You do have the ability to have 10 points of equipment, just like you do with all the other armies. Um, but let's say, like my old um, Black Templar uh, kill team was... I think two or three intercessors, a couple of reavers, and then a couple of scouts. And I can't run that anymore at all. I mean, not even close. And so, I mean, I didn't really expect that the armies, the seven or eight different armies that I built and painted over the years, and by armies, I mean kill teams, but the seven or eight different kill teams that I had put together for kill team, I did not particularly expect them to survive the transfer across, where it's all of a sudden like, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I figured some points would change and I'd have to make some tweaks and some things like that. I just didn't assume they would just say, sorry, you can't run more than one type of uh, figure if you're playing Space Marines and everybody else pretty much gets to run two different types of figures. But that's, well, I mean, you know, Harlequins are Harle the, 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 they just have the one. But you, you see what I'm saying? It doesn't make it fun when you don't have any choices, when they're just like, here you go, have a good time with that. But I think that's by design. Like I said, this compendium is a stopgap until all the new box sets start dropping. But the, here's the, the thing. They're not going to drop all at once. They're going to tr not trickle out, but they're going to come out, you know, once a quarter, you're going to get maybe two or three different drop, you know, sets. So you finally, you'll be like, okay, finally a, a box for Eldar. So you got new models for Eldar, let's say, and they got all kinds of cool, interesting stats and stuff like that. But you just get to play with those folks. It's like as if... Warcry decided that you could only ever play with like the Unmade and the Corvus Cabal and all of those guys and they hadn't opened it up to um, Age of Sigmar models and then these books and all that kind of stuff. It would have made Warcry, frankly, incredibly dull for the most part. Um, admittedly, Necromunda kind of has that because you basically just use Necromunda gangs, but there's a lot more going on with Necromunda, I think narratively specifically. Um, I can't imagine playing a game of Kill Team, the new version of Kill Team, in match play. It seems like it would be super dull, especially if you're playing with Compendium Forces. If I decided I'll play my Space Marine Primaris Intercessors versus your, I don't know, whatever, uh, Chaos Space Marines, that's going to be a pretty dull game. There's no specialists at all, so there's none of that stuff if you're playing match play. Yeah, you sure you have 10 points of equipment, so you've got a little bit of customization there, but there's just not much. There's swapping out a little bit of... Uh, you know, some armor, or not armor, but weapons here and there. You've got your strategic ploys and your tactical ploys, which are basically the same type of cards as we had to some degree before in the old series. I just got to say that this is a super, super disappointing book because 
not only is it now a situation, as I've said multiple times, where it's going to cost you 50 bucks to play because you're going to need this book, which let me just show you real quick here uh, while I got it. This is the uh, core book for, that's now $50. Here's the old core manual, which was $40. You can see that the new book is thinner, but more expensive and has less in it. And I mean, even the compendium is uh, thinner in comparison to the old core book and also uh, more expensive. So yeah, that's not, um, that's not going to be ideal. This is, becomes a very difficult game to tell new players, hey, you should check this out because you could really have a good time with it because you're going to base at least need a hundred bucks. Plus then you're not going to have the cool little measuring gauges and all that kind of stuff. I'm a little surprised they didn't add custom dice like Fantasy Flight generally does to stuff, but thankfully we're not there yet. Though, uh, very probably War Cry is getting a reboot next summer because it came out in 2019 and that's three years ago. Um, maybe we'll get a one year reprieve because of COVID, but nah. and I could easily see uh, them taking away the very fun ability to use soup, you know, where you build a whole bunch of weird stuff with a bunch of different types of models. Um, I could see them taking it away and putting it into a compendium type of situation here, just like they're doing with this, where basically now you can run, you know, like one or two different types of models within your army and that's it. And well, we got rid of the points for you. Yeah, but the points are still there in the background somewhere. You guys as the designers are using points. This is not... <sighs> anyway, I've been talking for a very long time and I, um, because I really, really like skirmish games and I've really, really liked Kill Team. And, um... This new compendium, which also I'm going to mention as well, doesn't have elites, doesn't have commanders in it. So those are two new, more books that you'll can, be, will be coming very soon, I'm sure. That, so then you're going to be spending, what, $200 on books to be able to play the game? I mean, obviously you don't need elites and you don't need commanders, but if this is a $50 book, why aren't at least elites in here? What's the, well, because you can only run two types of models. So um, I guess there's no point. Again, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Maybe a bit keyed up. I'm not going to lie. So... Um, if you want a decent game and you're interested in, in, in playing Kill Team and you're really on board, I would honestly tell you, and if you like the forces that are in the Octarius box, I would tell you to get the Octarius box because those two forces are pretty interesting. You get some options and things you can do, different types of models, comms guy, medic guy, hardened, uh, veteran, uh, sergeant, all this different type of stuff, and you can build some forces within their very strict confines, but you can do something kind of interesting with it. Um, if you don't like those two forces and you just decide, well, I'll just play with the models I already have, uh, you, you better like vanilla 